Okay. So welcome everyone. I am Rachel Bremness and the Senior Provider Relations Manager for the Juniper team at Trellis. Juniper is a Minnesota network of organizations offering evidence-based programs for health, well-being, and fall prevention. Today kicks off National Fall Prevention Awareness Week. During this week, we call attention to the issue of falls in our country and what can be done to prevent them. So with our time this afternoon, we're going to be talking about why fall prevention matters, particularly in Minnesota, how to check your risk for a fall, what resources to use, simple ways to reduce your risk, and evidence-based programs for fall prevention. I do like to make these sessions as interactive as possible, so I have some questions for you as we go along. My first one is a true or false question. So please share your answer in the chat. True or false, falls are a normal part of aging. True or false? False. Heard one false, a false in the chat. False. Yep. False. More falses, kind of unanimously false. This is a smart group. I can't trick you at all. <laughs> uh, falls are common. They are common among older adults, but they are not a normal part of aging. Wrinkles, graying hair, those are normal parts of aging. Falls are not, which is good news because that means there is something that we can do to prevent them. So we know that approximately one in four Americans over 65 fall each year, and these are reported falls. And we also know that the cost of falls is pretty significant, both for the healthcare system, but also for the person individually. There's a lot of costs associated with it that are hard to quantify, like loss of independence and loss of mobility. In Minnesota in particular, we have quite a few uh, hospital treated falls. This is some data that the Minnesota Department of Health shared last year during Fall Prevention Awareness Week, and it's still very relevant today. So we can see that pre-COVID hospitalizations as a result of a fall were on the rise, and they seem to be following that same trend again. If we look at greater Minnesota, versus the seven county metro area, they're pretty comparable or have been in previous years when it comes to the number of falls with a more differentiation in 2021. If we look by gender, it does appear that women, there's a higher number of women being treated for falls than men. Now, my smarty pants husband would look at this and say, well, we, we guys must just be better at not falling. But you have to remember that there's a lot more women that live over the age of 70 because we tend to be healthier. So that plays into this proportion, the differences that we might see here. Especially when we look at hospital treated falls by age group. So the older a person gets, the higher likelihood or the higher number of faults that we do see. We know that more women do tend to live past 75 compared to men. Another question for you, where do most falls happen? Where do most falls occur? So please again, use the chat for this. If you're more comfortable unmuting, you can do that as well. But where do most falls occur? It could be a specific place, a specific room, a location. Where do you think falls occur? Home, bathroom, bathroom, home, living room, bathroom, residence room, home in your home. Home kitchen. Home kitchen, yeah. At night in your home, bedroom, bathroom. Well, you are all spot on. We do know that the vast majority of falls at least the ones treated by in the hospital are happening in the home. It's and that which again is good news because we can do a lot to help control our home environment and help reduce our risk of falling at home. Now this is a rather solemn statistic, but I think also helps get some important points across of one of the things that the CDC tracks are deaths related to a fall. 
And so they check uh, fall death rates by state. Where do you think Minnesota ranks among the 50 states when it comes to fall related deaths? If one is the worst and 50 is the best, so the lowest rate of fall related deaths, where does Minnesota rank? 15, I see in the chat, 3, 25, 20, high. Five. Yeah, high. <laughs> I know the colors might give it away a bit. Unfortunately, we actually rank second in the in the country. So second worst. Um, and which and why do you think that might be? Why why do you think we would rate second worst? And again, use the chat or unmute. Ice. Ice. Winter. Ice. What was that, Ramel? Winter. Winter. Ice and snow. Winter, ice on sidewalks, weather, winter. Yes, accurate record reporting, that could be part of it too. I think Minnesota is pretty diligent about its weather reporting. It's very common when we do presentations like these that people will think, well, it must be our winters. But interestingly enough, the Minnesota Department of Health has information on the causes of hospital treated falls in Minnesota. And snow and ice was actually pretty low on the list. And when we look at Minnesota Falls by month over the course of a year, if it were snow and ice, we'd probably see a really big increase over December, February, and January and February. But the data stays pretty steady throughout the year. So it might not be directly associated to winter, but what do many of us do in the winter when it's cold and icy outside? Stay home. We stay home. <laughs> we stay home. The I find, you know, when the sun sets at 430, it's easy to find reasons to um, not go out. Right? The sun doesn't come up till late in the morning and it sets early. So we have a lot of dark time where we maybe don't want to drive. With weather conditions, we may not want to go out and go for walks or drive to go to a health club or to an exercise class. And the uh, and so what researchers believe is happening is that it's not so much the snow and ice that's causing our higher rates in Minnesota, but it has to do with our behaviors as a result of that snow and ice. So not being as active. We know that it only takes two weeks of a change of activity for us to start to see changes in our muscles and our strength. So it doesn't take very long. And that's one of the solutions we'll talk about in a little bit. But I also just want to point out that, unfortunately, the Minnesota fall-related deaths have increased. Back in 2019, we were ranked fourth in the country. And when I checked this morning and pulled that data for you, now we are ranked as uh, at second. So unfortunately, we're heading in the wrong direction, which is why we're so glad that so many of you are here today and paying attention to this issue so that we can do something about it. The National Council on Aging has what they call a falls free checkup. It's a 12 question questionnaire. I'm gonna share the link in the chat and where a person can go through the questionnaire and answer some pretty easy questions about themselves to be able to assess where they might be as far as risk level for a fall. We can certainly share this link in a follow-up email as well for those of you who might be joining on a tablet and not be comfortable opening up multiple screens at this time. In a lot of these questions, what they try to point to is how strong are our bodies? Are we worried about falls? Are we having to rush? Are we taking medication? So those are all things we're gonna talk about next when it comes to fall prevention. So we're gonna cover a couple areas of just practical things we can all do to reduce our risk of falling. These include home safety modifications, moving our bodies and staying active, checking our vision, managing our medications and taking care of our feet. 
So let's start with being safe at home. And so these are techniques that you might want to check on using both inside your home and also outside your home. So on your deck or porch or yard to make sure you have these proper or these helpful tools in place. One is handrails on both sides of the stairs. Um, at least one side is a good idea, but I know I slipped recently on my steps um, and I did grab one handrail, but I kept sliding because I didn't have a second one to hold on to. So having both to hold on to does help keep us steady. Making sure our steps and our flooring, that they're all in good repair, that we don't have loose carpet or loose boards that might cause us to trip. Removing throw rugs. I know in Minnesota, we do have a four season climate and moving into the fall, that's a time of year where I am trying really hard to keep the wet and the dirt out of my house. And so I do have throw rugs. And so I won't ask you to get rid of all of your throw rugs because that might not be as super practical, but think strategically about those throw rugs. If there's a throw rug in your home that chronically is slipping when you're stepping on it, or maybe it'll flip up on a corner and you or someone else in the home might be tripping on it. Um, maybe that rug is more of a hindrance than a help when it comes to keeping your home safe. With, floor, with any throw rugs or floor rugs, we wanna make sure that they're staying flat on the ground, that they are staying secure on the ground. So they might have a rubber backing. They might We might be using tape to make sure that they're adhered to the floor and that they're not moving on us. Good lighting is another important one. The My father is an electrician. He was a professional electrician for 40 years before he retired recently. And so I grew up in a home where conserving electricity was utmost important. It felt like I would no sooner walk into a room than my dad would be yelling at me to turn off that light because I didn't really need it, actually. But I've found now that I have my own home and my own electric bill that I'm responsible for that being able to see where I'm going really reduces the risk of me stepping wrong or slipping on something. And as a result, I'm much safer. And yes, I might have to pay a little bit more in my electric bill every month, but I think it's a worthwhile investment in keeping me safe. Now, does anyone in the meeting today have pets or, or know someone who has pets? Yeah. I do. And where do those animals tend to like to be? At your feet. At your feet or with us. I see we have Jeannie on the call today too. It looks like she has her cat right in her lap. They like to be with us. They like to be under our feet. They like to be on us. They like to be near us. And they uh, my, my mother-in-law has three Shih Tzus and they're all the same color as her carpet. So whenever we go to her house, those, those dogs, they like to be right next to us. So we have to pay very close attention to where they are because we don't want to trip over the dogs and hurt ourselves. And we don't want to trip over them and hurt the dogs. Or sometimes there might be a larger dog who's maybe stronger than they realize and might be very excited to see us, but we're feeling a little wobbly and don't want that dog bumping into us because it'll make us feel unsteady. So working with the human who takes care of that dog to make sure that the dog stays calm around us so that we feel safe. Grab bars, strategic grab bars can also be helpful especially in the bathroom area for helping with stepping over the tub and onto the bath mat or helping with getting up from the toilet, especially if our toilet's really low to the ground. It can be very hard just from a body mechanic standpoint to be able to get up and out. And the, the grab bars, I've heard that the grab bars that are fastened into the wall are a lot more successful than the suction cup ones that people really believe that the ones fastened into the wall are a lot more secure and a lot more helpful. And a towel bar is not the same thing as a grab bar. I had a friend who had a back surgery and she worked social worker with older adults. So she and her husband thought they did all the things. They have a two level home. So they got her a hospital bed that would be on their main level and made sure that they got a ramp for the stairs so she would be comfortable getting into the house. 
but they didn't get grab bars for the bathroom. And her very first day home, she went to shower. She stepped out of the tub, lost her balance, reached out for the to grab something and grab the towel bar and pulled it out of the wall, which was kind of a bummer because they had just gotten her home and now they had some holes in the wall to contend with. And using walking aids, oops, click the wrong button. There we go. Using walking aids, and by this it means canes and walkers. And you might be thinking, well, shouldn't we be trying not to use canes or walkers so that we have good balance? Well, canes and walkers are very important tools that can help with fostering independence and confidence. And I have a bit of a story for you about this, and it's about my friend Rose's grandparents. So my friend Rose's grandfather was living at home and he, his wife, Rose's grandfather, had already moved to her nursing home for care because she was living with dementia. And Rose's grandpa would go every day to visit grandma at the nursing home and bring her treats. And he would go to church on Sunday and spend time visiting friends and really living a full life at home on his own. But over time, he started feeling a little wobbly and started feeling a little off balance. And it was recommended to him that he use a cane or walker. And he was worried that if he started using that, well, maybe people will think I'm not that independent. Maybe people will think I can't do things on my own. And he refused to use the cane and walker. And unfortunately, what ended up happening is he started withdrawing from a lot of things that he used to really enjoy. He stopped going to visit grandma. He stopped going to church because he was nervous about his balance. So finally, a family member was able to talk him into trying using a cane. And as a result of that, Rose's grandpa was able to do everything that he enjoyed again because he had that tool. And that's what it is really is a tool to give, make him feel a little bit more steady and a little bit more confident so that he would go out and about and visit grandma and do all the things that he enjoyed, which is also beneficial because it keeps him active. It keeps him active and moving and it keeps his body really strong. All right, and another important tip is just taking our time. If we know we feel a little wobbly or off balance, yep, Nordic walking poles can help with this too, or it can be a walking aid as well. Thank you, Karen. Um, so taking our time, if making sure we're paying attention to where we're placing our feet, changes in terrain, how our body is moving in space, where our center of balance is as we're walking, all of that can happen when we take our time, when we walk and when we move. And when we're paying attention to those things, we land more solidly, we feel more stable, we're more aware of where our body is stepping and how whether our center balance is where it should be to help keep us upright. Another question for you here. True or false, a fear of falling is a risk factor for a fall. A fear of falling is a risk factor for a fall. See, true, true, yes, true. This is a very smart group. Yes, it is true. A fear of falling is a risk factor for a fall. And if you've already opened that that falls checkup from the National Council on Aging, you will see that that's one of those, one of the first questions in that assessment. Now, why is this? Why is a fear of falling a risk factor for a fall? Well, it goes back to activity. And what do we do when we're nervous about something? If I, maybe I really love to go to the farmer's market, but I know to go to the farmer's market, I have to drive there and I have to park a ways away and navigate the sidewalks. And I'm not feeling very, I'm feeling a little tippy. I'm not feeling very well balanced. Yeah. So we're not as active. We're not as, so what I might with, do if I'm nervous about that walk to the farmer's market, unfortunately, maybe I just don't go because of that fear. So that fear tends to impact our activity level directly, which in turn impacts our strength and mobility. And one of the best things we can do for ourselves when it comes to fall prevention is keep our bodies strong. 
Now, it's true that bodies change as we get older, but it's possible at any age to restore strength, flexibility, and balance. And it's never too late to start an exercise program, even if it's something we've never done before. What the CDC recommends is 30 minutes of exercise a day. And that doesn't have to be 30 minutes all at once. What some people will do is maybe they take a 10 minute walk after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that's how they get their 30 minutes in. It could also include vacuuming or it could it could include mowing the lawn. I um if anyone here has taken the class A Matter of Balance before, there's a video in that class where a husband jokes that his wife has probably put 100,000 miles on the vacuum, getting her steps in and her activity in. So there's a lot of different ways to make this happen for ourselves. Your health care benefit may include a health or health plan may include a health club benefit of some sort. We, there are also evidence-based classes that are specifically meant to help with fall prevention. I'm gonna take a moment to talk about some of those programs here. So those, these programs are available through Juniper. So you can find them at yourjuniper.org and they're free or low cost thanks to grants and health plan reimbursement. And there are four fall prevention programs available. These first two, are more of a classroom style. So they are a mixture of lecture, activities, and discussion. They do even include some exercises in them for fall prevention as well, but they're not full two hours of exercises. It's about 30 minutes. A matter of balance is really trying to address that fear of falling and to help us gain confidence with, if there's something I'm nervous about doing because of a fall, what can I change or what can I ask for as far as help? Um, what can I do to make me feel confident? So back to the farmer's market example, if I'm nervous about the long walk from the parking lot to the farmer's market, could I ask a friend to come with me and help me along that walk? Could I see if maybe that friend could drop me off at the farmer's market and then go park and then come and meet me at the market? Or maybe if I call the farmer's market, and I explain my concern, do they have a closer spot where they would let me park for the day? So helping to think through different solutions. Stepping on brings in uh, more guest experts. So there's a vision expert, a pharmacy expert, and uh, someone to talk about removing home hazards and community safety. The other two are more movement classes. So it's all about exercise. There's Tai Chi Chuan Moving for Better Balance, which is an adapted Tai Chi program, which uses eight traditional Yang Tai Chi forms to train balance. This class has been found to reduce the risk of falling by 58% and 67% for people with Parkinson's disease. So it's very tailored and specific on improving balance and postural control, which means where our body is moving in space, where is my center of balance and making sure I'm aware of that at all times. And even practicing safely situations where maybe we lose our balance and tip forward and how we catch ourselves and regain our balance again. SAIL or Stay Active and Independent for Life is more of a traditional exercise program with a mixture of aerobic strength and balance exercises. This class has been found to reduce the risk of falling by 25%. <clears throat> so for all of these programs, no prior experience is necessary and all ability levels are welcome. So for sale and Tai Chi, exercises can be adapted for seated, standing, or holding onto a chair for support. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, some other tactics to be aware of. Getting your vision checked every year. Our vision does change as we age, and those changes can happen gradually. And so it's good to catch them early on so we can intervene. And we can have changes made in our prescriptions as they are needed. One moment, pardon me. Okay, thank you. 
Some people will say that you should get your vision checked every year on your birthday so you don't forget. I think birthdays should be for fun. So I say schedule it on your half birthday so you don't forget and save your birthday for fun things. Original Medi Medicare doesn't always cover vision. So something to be aware of, especially since we're being, we will be moving into Medicare open enrollment starting October 15th, is does your Medicare Advantage plan, if that's the type of plan you choose, include vision? Especially if this is an important item for you. There are plans out there that do include vision benefits. If you are not able to afford vision benefits, Senior Linkage Line can provide resources on where to access vision support. For those of you who aren't familiar with Senior Linkage Line, it's the 1-800 number for senior resources in Minnesota and also provides objective Medicare counseling. We also wanna pay attention to our medications Medications and their side effects can sometimes cause dizziness, drowsiness, or lightheadedness, which could put us at risk for a fall. Many of us, especially as we get older, take multiple medications, and it only takes four or more medications for the chance of experiencing side effects to increase. And four is very easy to get to when we include prescription medications, over-the-counter medications, vitamins, and herbal supplements very, very easy to get to four or more. So talking to our pharmacist or our healthcare provider, they can provide insight into if we're experiencing any side effects, why we might be experiencing them, which medications they might be coming from, and what we can do. Can we change the dosage? Can we switch to a different type of medication? Or in some situations, there isn't really anything we can do, but it, we can be aware that this side effect is coming from this medication combination and take other preventative measures. Additionally, we wanna be careful when consuming alcohol with medications because sometimes that can lead to some of these side effects as well. Our feet are very important when it comes to preventing falls because our feet are what help keep us upright. Unfortunately, we know that one in three older adults do experience some type of foot pain, and that's really important because if our feet hurt, we're not as active, and that activity is so important for fall prevention. Other conditions such as neuropathy can impact our feet's ability to sense changes in terrain as we're walking so that we can react and maintain our balance. It's important to keep our feet clean and dry and take care of our toenails regularly. There are senior centers and nurse programs that will offer foot care clinics to help us if we would need some support with that. Another option, if that isn't in your area, is to consider maybe a pedicure at a salon where they are taking care of your toenails. They're also massaging their legs to help with circulation. Shoes are very important too. So wearing shoes that have a good fit with good soles, Preferably a shoe that encloses your foot, so it has a front and a back, so something covering your heel. The, I don't know what it is about being a woman in her 30s, or maybe it isn't just me, but it seems like for every holiday, every birthday, I get those fuzzy slipper slip-on socks. So that's the slip-on socks with the little silicone things on the bottom for grip or the slip-on slippers. And I found that when I wear those slip-on slippers, I actually clench my toes because I'm trying to keep the slippers on. And with the slipper socks, with the silicone on the bottom, they will inevitably fall off my heel and ball up under my feet. So those shoes or slippers, while well, they're not very helpful for me in keeping my balance and staying steady because I actually work harder to keep them on and they kind of inhibit my mobility. So I've since switched and gotten really nice fuzzy moccasin slippers that have a back, they stay on my foot and they have a nice supportive sole to them. All right, so my next slide for you is another activity. So on this screen, there are going to be, I will admit it, a ton of safety hazards. What I need you to do is focus in on what are the fall hazards in this image. And I'll ask you to either share in the chat the fall hazards that you see or unmute and share it with the group. All right, here we go. So what are the fall hazards that we see? 
see rugs. So these rugs are not laying flat on the ground. The stairs don't have handrails. There's wires going across. That's a tripping hazard. There's a cat, so we want to pay attention to that cat. Slippers are not supportive. I think I saw clutter too. There's clutter on the stairs. That's not good. The footstool could be a tripping hazard if we don't see it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep, glasses on the table instead of wearing them. That's not gonna help with our vision. No handrails, the prescriptions. Now, it might be hard for you to see, but there's actually spider webs in these in this medicine cabinet. So I might be a stretch, but we could maybe imagine that these medications are very well managed. Maybe there's some side effects happening here that the person isn't aware of. All right. Trying to think if we forgot, missed anything. Oh, one other one. So there's only two lights in this room. And it doesn't look like there's any, they are turned on. There's no overhead light. This is actually a broken smoke detector, which is a whole separate issue. Um, but the lighting in this room might not be very good. Yes, there's a ton of fire hazards. <laughs> it's a very, very unsafe place. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. So before we move on to questions, I do want to let you know that we have another session this week on Wednesday. This is around hearing and fall prevention. So unfortunately, hearing loss is often associated with dementia, which may lead to an increased risk of falling. So on Wednesday, we'll have a joint presentation with Starkey Hearing and the Alzheimer's Association of Minnesota and North Dakota. If you're interested in registering for that event, I'm gonna share that link in the chat. Oh, I see the coffee pot comment. Let's go back to the coffee pot. That's another one. The coffee pot is spilling. So there's a puddle here on the counter. There might be one on the floor too that could be problematic. I also want to raise, let you know that we do have fall prevention classes coming up. If you would like a deeper dive into the information we talked about today, a program like A Matter of Balance would be a very good fit. That We have an online class coming up in November, so that's great for anybody all over the state can attend that class. That's why we're so grateful for online options. They really open up doors for accessibility. We also have Tai Chi Chuan Moving for Better Balance classes coming up in October. And, and not listed on here are Stay Active and Independent for Life exercise classes as well. All of the classes can be found on yourjuniper.org. Are there any questions at this time? Questions, concerns, emotional outbursts, all the above. Are there any resources for installing grab bars in an apartment? Oh, that's a great question. So when it comes to grab bars in the apartment, you should be able to request the assistance from your property manager for that. The uh, Let me think if I can find anything on that quickly while we see if anyone else has a question. Thank you. I see there was an addition in the chat that Senior Linkage Line has a resource for installing grab bars for low cost for older adults. Let's put the Senior Linkage Line information in the chat too, because you're right, they do have good resources for that. Resources for fall prevention and people with memory loss. 
I wonder if um, the Alzheimer's Association would be able to speak to that on Wednesday. So I encourage you to come to that session as they would have some tips. Okay. But yes, Susan, I believe that your property manager is, if you request the grab bars, will install them. So I would recommend calling the senior linkage line for resources on that. I'll put their number in the chat. Thank you. What other questions do we have? Will, will the session on Wednesday be the same time? Yes, the session on Wednesday is from? 12 to, 12 to 1. It is from 12 to 1. So when we are anticipating, we will go until 1.15 with questions uh, because the that first hour will be full of pre presentation. And we want to make sure there's some time for questions. So please plan to allow a few extra minutes at the end. Good. Okay. You have a comment in the or question in the chat resources in other languages. I'm sorry, Dan. I think I spoke over you. What was your question? Well, please feel welcome to share. Um, resources in other languages, including Spanish. I'll need to do some research on that as well. I'm going to have a full list of things to look up into for you, this group. That's fantastic. The link for the Wednesday event, I will share that in the chat. That'll take you to the Juniper page with all of this information where, we, where you can see both sessions and where to register for both. And will they be repeated at any time? Um, we don't typically repeat sessions. We do record them so that you have access to the recording. So if you register but are unable to attend, you will be on our list to receive the recording. OK, thank you. Any other questions? We did find a resource for Spanish materials. I will share that in the chat. There are some other languages included as well. I'll, we'll include that in the follow-up email for everyone who registered so that you have access to it. All right, well, if there aren't any other questions, thank you everyone for your time and joining us today. We hope to see you on Wednesday for our next session. And thank you for helping us call attention to fall prevention awareness. Have a great day.